just a quick teardown of a uh, thermostatically controlled element um, out of a typical digital soldering iron. Now, um, I recently got a, um, a Yo oh God, I can't, can't pronounce it, Yehua um, soldering station, and <coughs> while I was playing about that setting it up, I managed to smoke one of the heating elements by way overdriving it um, temperature-wise, because I was uh, messing about the calibration, because my thermocouple that I was using to monitor the tip temperature wasn't that accurate, and uh, when I saw it glowing red hot, the whole iron bit, I thought, hmm, that's not good. And it duly, uh, the element burnt out. Fortunately, they supplied a couple of spares, and uh, this is one of the spares. The other one is now in the iron. But I thought it'd be quite interesting to see what's inside these. Um, so I took one to bits, and it is very interesting. For a start, there's an inner core and an outer sleeve, both ceramic. And the inner core has the heat element wound round approximately 15 mil, which is just over about half an inch. And what's really neat, um, uh, I'll show you uh, in a form of a little sketch I did. I'll just shove that stuff to the side. What's really neat is the construction because this core with the heating element on, element on it is actually got a cross-sectional uh, profile that, although it's very small diameter, it's only about two and a half millimetres diameter, I would say, it's got three distinct holes right down the middle of the core. And the holes are used for the wires. Two of them are used for a thermocouple. Let me find the thermocouple here. Here's the thermocouple. And they basically go down two of those holes. And the other one is to feed this end of the heating element um, at the end here. So you've got the thermocouple is threaded through this with the bead at the end. Uh, a thermocouple works by joining two dissimilar metals together. In the case of this one, I think it's a K-type thermocouple. I certainly I shoved, whoop, shoved it into a K-type thermocouple unit, and it showed exactly the same temperature and ballistics. So um, I would say this is a K-type thermocouple since it's one of the most common types and therefore one of the cheapest. And this is basically two bits of wire. One of the wires is called chromel, and one of them is called alumel. They're alloys. And the chromel is nickel chromium, and the al the Alumel is nickel aluminium, or aluminum, if you're American. And basically speaking, these two bits of wire get fused together at a tip. They just get sort of spot welded together at the end. And when they're heated up, they will generate a voltage differential between the two wires of approximately 41 microvolts per degree centigrade. And that doesn't sound much of a voltage, but when you consider that a soldier iron is going to operate in the region of, 30, of 350 degrees centigrade, it suddenly becomes quite a lot. And you're going to end up with about, at that temperature, about 14 millivolts, which is quite easy to uh, measure using a, an op amp, which is, I noticed that unit has two op amps in it, possibly one op amp for the iron and one op amp for the heat gun. <clears throat> so the thermocouple, very simple, is just shoved down two of those holes. The other wire comes up to the heat element. The heat element's wound round and the interesting thing about the heat element is that to make connections to it, uh, they've actually twisted two different wires together. If this red coil represents a heat element, then the heat element lead, the resistance wire, is extended down to the electrical connections. But over anywhere it's not supposed to heat up, they've twisted it with another wire. And I measured the resistance of these wires. Um, here, here they are here. There's a sort of little junction here in the middle. So they're about, say, three inches, 75 millimetres long, maybe 80 millimetres. And one of them measured at 0.4 ohms, and one of them measured at 2 ohms. So the 2 ohm one will be the heating element, and the other one will just be the general conductor. Um, and I'm guessing that they probably do this because it would be quite hard to make a good electrical connection that was reliable um, onto the heating element because it's probably a weak spot. Um, so. It's also, you can't really solder onto the heating element because it's probably a, another sort of um, chromy type, nickel type mix. So twisting the wires together is a really simple way of making a good connection along the full length and will effectively greatly lower the resistance of that. So it's a good way of connecting. So at the bottom of the um, heating element, they twist a wire on and it just runs down the outside of this shaft 
and the other end it's twisted on and then the twisted wire is actually shoved down the middle, uh, down the third hole. So you end up with four wires out the bottom, <coughs> uh, the two heating element wires and the two thermocouple wires. These are then sleeved in this outer sleeve, which just slides over, and then at the end, this is the sleeve shown here, at the end with the thermocouple and the element and the internal rod, they just fill it with a um, ceramic cement to seal it all in. And likewise at the bottom. But also at the bottom, as you can see from this, they also put uh, teflon -y type sleeves on them um, and uh, sort of glue them in place with the ceramic cement too. The Yehua, yeah, that's, see, that's really hard to pronounce. Yehua soldering iron uh, elements come with this uh, neat little base at the bottom. But I noticed that not all iron elements have this. It just seems to be fairly unique to a few different types. So since this is just completely separate from the main construction, um, and they just basically they, they cement it on again, and this is the bit that sits over the circuit board, I'd say that if you have um, an element, it might be worth a dead element, it might be worth um, salvaging this little bit off the bottom of it just as a spare in case you ever find you can't get the elements with this bit in the bottom because then this bit could be made captive to the circuit board and you could just use a, an element without that uh, base. And I really think that pretty much covers it really. It's, it's a very simple construction, um, very neat. It's obviously um, evolved over time but it means that the heat is concentrated at the end of this and it's also sensed using the thermocouple at the end. Um, I should add that thermocouples are rated up to thousands of degrees centigrade, so yeah, um, that makes them very well suited to the high temperatures of an iron. So, um, oh, another thing worth noting. This is a 24 volt element, 50 watt, and it's fed with an AC supply uh, from directly from the transformer via a triac, which is uh, optically, cu optically coupled with an optal triac, to um, the control circuitry. <coughs> The transformer has a winding with about 32 volts upwards on it. That's actually for the element, and I thought that was to force the element to heat a wee bit faster, but in reality, when I measured it um, when the element was running, I found that the higher voltage in the transformer is just to compensate for the fact that the, there will be losses in the cable because they're quite thin cables. So by the time it gets to the end here, it is pretty much about 25 volts, which is fine for this element. Um, oh, very interesting.